This is Self Coding Lab, and in today's video, I'll be doing a short video on how to convert React class components into React functional components using React hooks. So, why do we want to use React hooks and React functional components? Um, from my previous experience, I believe that it is simpler. Um, React hooks are easier to understand, and it requires less code compared to class components. So let's actually look at the app.jsx file that we have here. Um, I'll close these files for now. Um, we have a simple clocked class component where we have a date state with the initial value of a new date, um, a component did mount, which has a set interval that runs every one second that calls this function. And tick function basically sets Sets, sets state for date variable to new date. So as we can see on the left hand side, what that does is basically a small clock, a simple clock that updates every second. So how do we convert this into a class component or to a functional component using React hooks? So I will actually do, I will create it right below um, the clock class component itself. So I'll also call it clock. I'll call it clock one. No, it's not class, it should be const clock one equals. So this is a simple way to write um, a functional component. And in here, let's first take a look at here. We have a constructor that passes some props and super props. Um, this is basically the same thing as us having the ability to pass in props here. Um, let's say we have code snippet here. Uh, clock, clock one. Props equals whatever props we pass in here that we might want later to be part of the clock one functional component. But um, let's take a look at the state itself. Um, we have a date state. So in order to write this in React hooks, we do this const. Um, we we pick a variable name, let's call it date. Um, then we pick a set variable name. So we do set date um, and we do react.use state. And because this has initial value of new date, we also pass in here the initial value of new date. And in, and in order to uh, handle component did mount and component will unmount, we will use something called react use effect. Um, and I'll write it down right here. So in here, uh, if we were to put in a variable name or some type of variable here, it would basically be some sort of a component did update. But if it were to have no variables within the within the array, it'll be just like component on mount. And if we were to return from it, a return a function from the use effect, it will be more so towards component will unmount. So let's so let's actually take a look. So in here, uh, as we can see, component didn't mount. We set a timer. We set a timer, timer ID equal to set interval. And we pass in this, pass in tick. Then we pass in 1000. And in order to create a function, create the functionality same as component will unmount, we basically just do this. Um, we return from return from the use effect function. And in here, all we need to do is clear interval and we pass in the timer ID. So taking a look at it here, this is exactly the same in terms of functionality as component did mount and we pass in the interval or set interval and we pass in tick and 1000 and component will unmount where we just clear the timer ID, which is what we do right here and we will create 
the tick function as well now. Which is basically just set date, new date. Since all we are doing here is we're basically going to update the state of the date with the new date. And here we're doing the exact same thing. What is this error? Ah, here. Um, we, you gotta create it like this tick. Now this is good. And we'll have the function right here, or we'll have the render right here as well, which we just copyright this. And instead of having this that state, all we need to do is state that local time string. And instead of actually passing this to the front end, let's do this. Instead of passing this um, component to, to our index.js to be rendered, let's pass in clock one. Let's see how this looks. And we'll just restart the server as well. As we can see, it functions and behaves exactly the same as the React class component from above. So let's see what I said from earlier requiring less code compared to class components. All right, so let's shorten this up. The shortest it gets, let's say, is from line 3 to 25, so 22 lines. If we were to shorten this function, as we can see, it's from 27 to 44, which is not that much shorter, but it's still shorter than the class component from above. And as you can see, in the long run, if we were to have more complicated components that requires more complicated logic within the component themselves, um, the code is just easier to read like this compared to class component, in my personal opinion. And I think it's just much cleaner and more concise the way it reads. So yeah, um, this is basically how we write a, a React functional component with the React hooks. Just a very simple example using a clock class component grabbed from the React documentations. Um, if you guys would like to see more videos regarding um, functional components with React hooks, please like, subscribe, and comment down below. Um, and I'll see you guys next time.